Hey guys, I wanted to talk to you guys about a very interesting case that we treated here at the Institute of Regenerative Orthopedic and Sports Medicine. I'm gonna give you the backstory here so we could understand. This was a patient that originally developed a medial tibial plateau fracture, which is a fracture within the knee. Uh, unfortunately, this patient had originally been diagnosed with osteoporosis, which means her bones were weaker and she's an emergency room nurse in one of the busiest uh, the emergency departments in the state of Florida. Unfortunately, when she developed this, this uh, fracture, um, she couldn't work because she couldn't put any weight on it. The initial decision was to treat this non-surgically by putting her uh, non-weight bearing, put her on crutches. Unfortunately, after four months, she wasn't healing. Uh, she still couldn't go to work. She couldn't put any pain, uh, any uh, pressure on the knee with a lot of pain. At that point, traditionally, standard of care requires surgical intervention. We'll try to fix this because at that point, it has become a non-union. Well, she came to us asking if we had any other alternative treatments. We talked about was out, out there in the uh, in the literature and what other people are doing around the world. And she decided to do something relatively experimental, at least here in the Institute, where what we did is we decided to inject the patients uh, uh, inside that fracture line with the patient's own autologous growth factors from the patient's own blood. Well, I'm gonna jump into the other video that kind of describes the technique and, and you can see the uh, how we did it and the ultimately outcomes. But this is something that everyone should know about because we've been able to use this technique for other conditions um, where the patients are not healing or the patients are, are, uh, are not a good surgical candidate. For example, uh, patients with uh, avascular necrosis at a young age, we've been able to kind of slow down the progression and stimulate of the body's own healing, as well as advanced osteoarthritis, especially the patients is having what we call bone marrow lesions or edema within the bone. Um, anyways, hope you enjoy the video and uh, you find this uh, uh, informative. Take care. In the, the, the last MRI before she came to see us, we could see the, all of the edema here in, um, into the medial compartment, essentially in the medial tibial plateau. On this particular uh, image, the radiologist did a nice job of highlighting where that fracture was. So when she came to us, uh, essentially for a, another, uh, another option, and we, we talked about uh, performing a relatively experimental procedure, at least here in the Institute in South Florida, where what we try to do is we try to localize the fracture and inject uh, autologous growth factors derived from the patient's own blood. And that was that, that's what we decided to do. It was the first time we do this in the office under local anesthesia. This has been done before under, under uh, light sedation, but never under uh, local anesthesia. I gotta give a shout out to Dr. Steve Sampson from the Ortho Healing in Los Angeles and Dr. Luna from, uh, from our European colleagues that first described this technique and sent it to me. So what, what we first did was we were able to identify and triangulate exactly where the, the epicenter or the center of the fracture line was. So using um, a measurement, we were able to identify uh, exactly where it was at, which is about 1.4 centimeter from the distal to the joint line, and about 1.5 centimeters um, medially <coughs> from the cortex. Then using our ultrasounds, we were able to measure the, the, uh, the joint line, exactly where the entry point was. Then using live x-rays, or our x-rays, we were able to identify and, and measure based on what our ultrasound and our MRI had found. With a special technique that we are, we're going to publish soon, um, we were able to anesthetize the periosteum into the, uh, of the, first of all, the, the subcutaneous tissue, tracing all the way down to the periosteum where the, our entry point was going to be. Then using an 18 gauge needle, we were able to advance, advance until we were able to confirm the exact epicenter of the fracture line. At that point, um, vascular endothelial growth factors derived from the patient's own autologous blood was, was injected, about two cc's of that was done. We were also injected about 10 billion platelets intra-articular as well, high concentration of leukocyte-rich uh, platelets. The procedure was, it, it took about 45 minutes to an hour. It, it was all done on the local anesthesia uh, with, uh, with, with a little bit of, of uh, Valium uh, 30 minutes before the procedure, just more for patient uh, anxiety and, and, and comfort level. Patient was able to uh, leave the office by herself and when, when and today's on the follow-up MRI, now we got six weeks after that procedure and we are seeing for the first time that that fracture line has already began to get better. In here, you can see that the that edematous area of the periosteum and the intraosseous compartment has already began to subside. We do not see that ed ed edema anymore and when we look at the same image, um, that fracture line is no longer visible in comparison to the MRI from six weeks ago. This is a patient that had been dealing with this for now almost six months. Um, the only thing that we that was able to, uh, to get her over from this 
to that was that intra-ulcious injection. Thank you.